Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend D.G. Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This That or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Devin Grayson, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Diggity dink. Hello, and welcome back to another week of the Nightwing News. All new, all different. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is... I'm Kristen. And today we are going to be talking Titans Season 4, Episodes 7 and 8, which we both got both this week. Nightwing 103, and of course I'll give you a quick rundown on Batman Superman's World's Finest number 14, also featuring Dick Grayson. And yes, the bad news, yes, we have we have to wait till next week for Dude Where's My Gar, so. Ah, uh, I know, there was, there was no Gar in those episodes, however... That leads me to believe, as would only be fair, that Dude Where's My Gar is all Gar. I wonder if that's going to be the Stargirl episode. I wonder if that's how they, they find him with uh, Stargirl. Oh, yeah, maybe. Because, he, yeah, because there's not that many episodes left, so. Right, I mean, it's only going to be 12, right? So we've just I got so. four left, right? Nine, 10, 11, 12? Uh, I think so, yeah. Which is why it kind of surprised me that they put, uh, put two episodes on this week. Yeah, yeah. But I guess since they made us wait so long. <laughs> All right. A part of what I'm wondering, and I don't know if we'll ever know, because I don't know if they would say this, is did they have the whole season fil- uh, film and then and not expecting it to be expecting it to be renewed? And then when they found out it wasn't, is that part of the delay? Like, did they have to film a new last episode or make the last episode longer or something to wrap it up? I haven't heard either ways, but I mean, maybe. It's kind of makes you wonder because the gap was really long. I mean, I think it stopped in November, right? And then it didn't start back up until March. Something like that. Yeah, I know it was before the new year. Yeah. Yeah. Let me check. I'm pretty sure it would tell us on IMDb. <laughs> Me wow. Oh, okay, yeah. It says Brother Blood film are uh, aired on uh, dropped or whatever you would say on December first. Okay. And then yeah, we didn't get seven and eight until April thirteenth. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I mean so, yeah. I mean That's I a long could, time. Yeah. I mean I could see them maybe uh having to film a new last episode. I mean, unless they are were worried, you know, writing was on the wall and you know, they are Maybe they filmed the last episode where it could have worked as a, either way as a series or season finale, but I guess we'll find out in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, I mean, what was it uh, last season? I mean, they kind of, I mean, you could tell they were doing more, but I mean, it could have ended as like a the end of the series. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, because it kind of wrapped things up. It also hinted at, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's I guess the new last episode is called Titans Forever. So yeah. You know. Speaking of Titans, you should say the news. We're not just getting Tom Taylor's Titan series. We're also getting. Oh, yes. We are getting Mark Wade. Uh, yes. The team bringing us Batman Superman, the world's finest, is giving us a Titan spinoff. So, yes. So, it's going to be called World's Finest Teen Titans, right? I think so. Yeah. That's cool. So, I don't... so that means it'll be the Fab Five. I don't want to take the credit, although we probably should. Uh, I'm guessing Dick Grayson and. Uh, that Grayson must be proving very popular in this series because we did see a little uh, bit of the Titans, but I mean we've seen we've seen a lot more Dick Grayson in this. But yeah, yeah, maybe the Titans ones went over well. I wonder. I wonder if after that bad date, I wonder if Supergirl's going to make any appearances in that book. <laughs> oh my god, how funny that be! Roy just like making fun of him, be like, "Ha, you you bombed!" <laughs> oh my gosh, what if Roy and Supergirl go on a date? Oh. The- <laughs> I can't decide if I think it would be funnier if Roy and Supergirl got on, went on a date and it went even worse or just as bad, or if it went awesome. Either one would be hilarious. Mm-hmm. Oh, it could be any of them. could be Wally, because maybe, yeah, I don't know, they have more in common. 
Yeah, maybe. Guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh... I feel like if she was annoyed at Dick liking attention, she would be extra annoyed at Roy. Oh, true. Oh, yeah. Roy loves attention. So that could be even more hilarious. Or, like I said, that's why it could be hilarious if it went really well instead. Because you'd be like, what the heck? Uh... So either way, it would be fine. Oh yes, I'm. I was. I was trying to find the synopsis for uh, the next episode. Yes, uh, supposedly that is. Dude, where's my Gar? Is the crossover? So okay, and we'll find where Gar is because yeah, dude, where is our Gar? <laughs> I know. So should we talk to show first? There. Sure. So yeah, what did you think? I mean, so I wrote all sorts of random things. Down oh man, she has a whole book. <laughs> this time was. With- as I was watching. So, yeah, it's it's almost hard enough. Okay, so I guess for the first one, number seven. Um, so I think one thing... All right. Trigon and Brother Blood were not related in the comics, right? Those were two separate things in Teen mm, Titans. Yeah, no, I don't think. I think yeah, Brother Blood was more like a cult leader and yeah. Yeah, like, I remember him being a cult leader and yeah, there was Mother Mayhem. But I, I think it was kind of tied into that sort of rise of scams and weird religious groups in the 80s and not oh yeah um, not trigon although then didn't brother blood end up also being like a ruler of some country or something um oh uh, maybe i mean they did a few things with brother blood but yeah i don't think he was ever related to trigon um so i guess what and roberta i don't remember her from the comics no me neither so yeah she's probably a okay. new creation yeah yeah so one thing that I thought watching this, these two episodes, especially number seven, is, and I think some people have said, complained about this before, but it just now hit me, is sometimes it feels like the heroes are really incompetent in Titans because basically all of the tech is Bernard. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, maybe it's because in the Titans, Cyborg often did a lot of the tech, although Dick is not unknown to do tech but tim it feels particularly obvious with tim because tim is kind of a techie robin you know he's the photography computer nerd um one and tim didn't really do a lot of i mean he had that moment with oh maybe it's gametria with the numbers but all the tech was bernard yeah if bernard didn't show up with all of his tech they would have been screwed yeah no all tim has is sun dogs (laughs) right yeah and I guess it also annoyed me a little bit that the language in the book that Lex gives them is Old Tamaranian, and Corey's like, yeah, I don't know it. Which, I mean, okay, I realize, yes, Old English and in- Modern English are not the same, and so, sort of thing. But it's like, it's her planet. Yeah, but... I, I, yeah. why do they have to make it be a dialect that she doesn't know? Why do they have it be a dialect she doesn't know? It just seems like it's emphasizing that the heroes are incompetent. <laughs> I guess, but I mean, I, I took it as like, you know, it was maybe it's the difference between modern English and Latin or something. Right, no, I mean, I got... Yeah. On the one yeah. hand, it didn't... I didn't think that was really... It just, I guess it just kind of annoyed me that they had Corey not know it. Um, mm. Just because I felt like it emphasized that the hero. I'm like, why are these guys heroes? <laughs> well, yeah, remember, I mean, there's a, there's always a point in, in every Titan season where it's just like, really? You guys can't do that? Right. or Yeah. Well, and again, the Trigon versus the Tamaranians, they added that for the show, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and what about Connor? I mean, I get that he's, he's being nasty now because, like, his side he gets from Lex is coming out, but I don't know. I'm just like... Still doing yeah, he's so Lexi. <laughs> yeah. Put that down. Ah, yeah. Um, then, so, I felt like with Dick, so when he and Corey went to see um, Roberta. Roberta, and it was like, oh, the prophecy says you can end this, but you will end as you are now. And then they go to leave, and Corey's like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Shouldn't we talk about that? And then they didn't, and that annoyed me, because I feel like in the comics, they would definitely talk about that. On the other hand, I feel like, guys, this is not your first round of prophecies. The woman was very specific in the translation. She did not say you would die. She said you would end as you are now. 
thought was with the screen. I was like, it doesn't say you're going to die. It just says you'll be different. Jeez, guys, this isn't your first prophecy. Yeah. I, sometimes, again, sometimes the writing fails us in these seasons. So, Right. But then I thought in number eight, Dick and Ted and Carol and Corey, um, that when Dick was like, Batman's trained me for this, where we potentially lose our identities, and we just uh, have to put our memories down on this Walkman. And I was like, oh, wow, that is a hardcore. Like, that is straight out of the comics. They definitely would do that. I know, but, <laughs> yeah. but and, and, well, that was my problem, and then she's all, like, uh, I don't know, it seems like she's offended, where she's just like, oh, well, you know, you... Uh, yeah, lessons from a psychopath. That's you know, that's that's BS. That's horrible and all this. And I'm like, do you want to get out of this uh, this uh, magical booby trap or where you're about to be brainwashed by this cult? I mean, it's like it felt like more that would have been a perfect opportunity for a oh, he was raised by Batman joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like you know, it's not like he's asking you to do anything like extremely horrible it's just like you know put down some horrible memories on a tape you know yeah although um he said he was 13 too old (laughs) maybe they think in in the real world that's a little it's a little more believable yeah i mean uh you know 13 is still pretty young yeah um so uh and then i was glad that bernard and tim got back together because at the beginning of that episode where Bernard was like, ah, oh, I feel like we should just be friends. I was saying to the TV, I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, you just say that because Tim's bad about returning your text. Like, I get it. I brought, I would have done, if I were Bernard, I would have said the same thing. because I don't but, want you to know how much you've hurt me. And it's like, how horrible would that have been? He, like, slept with him. Then he's like, oh, I think we should just be friends. It's like, how dare you? Yeah, but he didn't reply to his text. I mean, and he was bad about it. He's like, oh, I guess I should reply to my mom, too. <laughs> He was like, oh, my God. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's appropriate. <laughs> Shame him. He should have lied to his Yes. Mom. So it seems like we're moving towards a Dick and uh, Corey couple here. Yes, because that's the memory that kind of, you know, saves her. Is their oh, yeah. Dick, after they had, got together the yeah. first time and he was like, I should have talked to her more about my feelings, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was my other thing. Can I just say I... F- I feel like they did not do a great job with the deaf people. Granted, I am not deaf, so I don't exactly know. But it felt like they didn't ask deaf people at all. And it just was like, oh, uh, they're going to be deaf because it's convenient and not because... I mean, they didn't well, I, well, they well the father said the daughter lost her hearing when she was ten, but he he did it to himself. So yeah, they right. were. But it, 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 yeah, that didn't it didn't seem believable because there's one scene where the father and daughter are talking, and it, they're they're lip readers. But it's like I swear they weren't looking at each other half the time. I'm like, well, how are you reading each other's lips if you exactly? Not, that's not looking what at I each- felt. I felt like it was not. Yeah. I felt like they did not do a good enough job showing these. It wasn't yeah. believe. It wasn't believable. They didn't do a good enough job showing you yeah. that the people were deaf, so you couldn't really anticipate that reveal, and it didn't. Because yeah, it felt like they weren't always looking at her when they were ordering. Like when they, oh, or like when they were in that, or the father and daughter were in that field, you know, right before the spell came down. It's like I swear, half the time they weren't looking at each other. I'm like, how are you? No, how do you know what the other one's saying? Right. Yeah, and you would also think that if she went deaf when she was 10, that they would know some sign language. Yes. And that they could communicate with each other also in sign language. Oh, yeah, the for the for oh, yeah, the father and daughter. Yeah, definitely. It's like... Yeah. So I just felt like I understood why they did that, but I felt that the show did not do a good job. The show yeah. was just like, oh, crap, we need a reason why these people aren't affected and we forgot... Oh yeah, let's make them deaf, and they never went back to make that make sense. Yeah. They just did it. They're like, oh, basically saying they're deaf but can read lips. It's like magic. <laughs> and the son and the son was like outside the town because what was it? He was like at camp when the, the thing happened yeah. ten years ago. I'm like, he's like, I come out here every day. I'm like, well, where where are you living then? If your father and sister are trapped in there, where are you living? Right. Yes, that's true. Relic. Yeah, and because I felt like they also did kind of a bad job when they're playing the music and then the deaf people start singing it. 
and he, and you're like, um, I thought you were deaf. And he's like, oh, I can imagine it. This is what it is. It's like, how do you know what's happening? Do you, I mean, they offered no explanation for that. That I know. I, I just thought. I, mean, I get like, it, it did kind of make sense, but it also felt like they forgot that they made them deaf. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh my God. And what about that, uh, that guy or whatever in the, in the radio station? Yeah, that was super weird. Why was there all that blood? In, like, was the radio run on blood? Dark, dark magic, man. They love their blood. That was weird. And again, brother blood trademark. So, right. But yeah, basically, Dick killed that guy. That's that's so funny. Yeah, everyone everyone sees the blood on Dick. What happened? <laughs> I was waiting for like Rachel and everyone to be like, "Did you kill someone?" <laughs> This version of Titans. That's true. Like, eh. Yeah. Because, yeah, they were kind of talking about, um, oh, yeah, because then the Titan, they were actually, you know, at that very beginning, they were like, oh, man, maybe I should have taken care of him when I had the chance. And people were like, don't blame me for it. I mean, they would never have. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of, she was like, man, I can't believe I didn't kill him. And they were like, don't worry about it. And nobody was like, yeah, don't worry about it. We don't kill people. We never would have expected you to. Exactly. And the whole thing with the sheriff, I'm like, every time Dick's like, oh, my name's Dick Grayson. It's like, you're not going to use an alias? He sensed there was magic. Maybe. I mean, the, the joke about Detroit was funny. <laughs> but. All right. Also, do you think a date shake would be delicious or disgusting? Uh, probably not for me. I don't know how good it would taste, but not for me. Yeah, I don't like milkshakes, so no flavor of milkshake is uh What? Me. I don't like the texture. It's like not, like not ice cream, but not milk. It's a weird in between texture, well, and I hate that. Well, that's the thing. You get a blender. You can make your own. You can make it thick or not thick, and do it yourself. You can make it whatever you want. Not happening, Phil. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I do want to say also, uh, the dude, the actor who plays Dick Grayson, is getting pretty ripped. That dude has definitely been working out. Oh yeah, like I saw him at. <laughs> way smaller when they had the flashback that and was clearly from the first season yeah like in that in that pink shirt i was like i was like is he getting heavy or is he getting built under there I, yeah yeah i know well his biceps of the shirt were like way bigger i was like dang i don't know man i guess he doesn't, doesn't need those fake muscles in the costume now <laughs> come come talk to us maybe well didn't maybe it's an australian thing during covid to get totally ripped because didn't uh isn't that what thor did too and he's also a student. there's a bunch of them like the one guy from eternals did that um like grant gustin from the flash tv show did that too i think his well his wife's like a trainer or something and it's like yeah during uh yeah lockdown he was you know they were working out and yeah he got I mean, well, I mean, hey, don't for, worry, fans. I did not get ripped, Serena. <laughs> I mean, if you play a superhero and there's nothing else to do, I mean, it's like, hey, it's it helps your brand, I, I guess. guess. You know. Did you get ripped during lockdown, Phil? No. <laughs> Same. All right, my final thought for that um, episode. Then, before we go, yeah. do you think them getting uh, Bernard and Tim getting rooms thirty-seven and thirty-eight was supposed to be like one of those little Easter eggs? Since you know, Dick was agent 37 and then he debuted in 38. That's like kind of a Robin thing. Oh, maybe. I don't know. But I, I mean, I would assume. Part of me was like, it could be. The other part of me was like, you're trying too hard, Chris. <laughs> I mean, I, I they wanted a joining room so I get two numbers together. But yeah, I don't know if it's an Easter egg or not. I don't know. Because normally in hotels, though, when you get adjoining rooms, it's like 38 and 40 or 36 and 38. Because usually it's odd and even. Yeah. Just say. I was going to say, right. I don't think there's any 37 or 38 in Tim's first appearance either. So, yeah, it can't be that. I don't know if it was supposed to. I was thinking maybe the 38 since it was like kind of maybe a rum shot up, but whatever. Hold on. Let me double check myself. Uh, yeah, because Tim's first appearance is Batman 4 for 36. So, it's yeah, that doesn't even work either. Maybe it's just random. Maybe. You know, somebody's favorite number or something. All right. Uh, oh, I, I have an interesting bit of uh, Titans trivia for you. Remember when um, the Titan series, like in the '90s, like after like they were like kicking Dick off the team and Roy takes over and stuff. Yeah. So when Marv was still writing it. Oh well, yeah, and, and Marv wrote it till the end. Okay. Yeah. Well, la well, last night on the Green Lantern podcast, Will and I talked to writer Ron Mars, who was writing Green yeah. Lantern at the time, and supposedly the original plan for like when, when Roy came in and like it, it, you know created a whole new team, Ron Mars was going to take over. 
at that point and write the rest of the book. But then I guess something happened. I don't know if they had some kind of contract thing or something with Marv. So yeah, Mar it, basically when they got to a certain point, they just ended the book and, you know, then they rebooted eventually. But yeah, no, he, he yeah, he originally, uh, Marv wasn't going to write it till the end. So yes, <laughs> Kristen's like, I don't care. Dick wasn't on the team anyway. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I read that there was a thought that maybe Dick would go and be a Green Lantern. I thought you were going to say something. Uh, no, like, no, yeah. Dick. No, it was just... Stop kind of thing, but... No, at that point, I think it was pretty much set in stone. It's like, hey, he's going back to the Bat books. All right, so then the Ted and Carol one. Are Ted and Carol... Like, I mean, I get the names. They're just supposed to be, like, very Midwestern suburban names, which it worked very well. Um... Is anybody also named? I mean, there's Ted's and Carol's in the in DC Comics, but are any of them a couple? I don't think so. That's what. Yeah, okay. Because it's like Ted Cord. Yeah. But Carol Ferris. Yeah, no. She's with Hal, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. There's. I was trying to think. Yeah, I don't think there's any Ted and Carol uh, matches in the DC. At least not that I could think of. Uh, but that was funny. I like their matching pajamas. <laughs> I know. Who put me in this? Same person who put me in this. <laughs> and their house was really nice. It was, I know. <laughs> but also, like, so Midwest HGTV, they, like, with their little sign, like, Ted and Carol's Bar and stuff, they really just needed a giant live, laugh, love somewhere in there. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Uh, <laughs> the matching cars. <laughs> yes, exactly. The matching cars. <laughs> And their outfits, like the outfit that Corey wore, I was like, oh, man, that is so, like, Midwest Country Club. Love it. I'm like, I, I get that's probably the only clothes in the closet, but I'm like, she tied her hair. She had the thing in her hair and everything. I'm like. <laughs> I know. It was part of her transformation. Well, undercover, too. It's like, yeah, we want them to it think we were brainwashed. Brain. Yeah, that was funny. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I was glad that Dick finally won a fight. Yes! Oh, that I love that fight in the church. <laughs> Just putting guys through pews and stuff. I love that. Uh, I did think it was kind of freaky when they got the horn. How? Oh um, yeah, Sebastian had to like burn it down into the what looked like what in a normal church would be a baptismal font, and it was like filled with lava. Yeah, and he like kind of burned his hand, but then it like started healing yeah. up. Yeah, that was pretty hardcore. <laughs> Kill the heretic! <laughs> yeah. Also, I mean, it worked, but I felt like it was also a little bit of an Easter egg that you saw the radio. It was called Blood Radio, but it was spelled like B-L-U-D. Yeah. Oh That's a little shout out to Bloodhaven, too. <laughs> oh, I thought, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I guess. I mean, be obviously because Brother Blood, but I felt like with it being yeah. spelled with the U. Nuts. Also, I really noticed, particularly in this season, that... It feels like we're fighting the American Revolution all over again because so many of the bad guys have British accents. <laughs> like Brother Blood does. And then when um, Connor went to talk to Mercy, she has a British uh, accent. Yeah. Fortunately, unfortunately, I think that's just because, uh, yes, a lot of the actors these days are either British or Canadian or Australian. Right, which is, which is fine. It's just I'm like, well, why is it that when they're a bad, they let them keep their accents? <laughs> We have bad people in America, too. I guess the mysterious <laughs> foreigner. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of a movie trope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love how Rachel was uh, basically uh, messing with the, the, the two guards' minds. It's like, really? You're going to shoot the daughter of Trigon? <laughs> yeah. It does seem like a bad plan. It's not going to be a problem. Well, it's going to be a problem when Trigon comes back. <laughs> and the other guy's like, don't shoot her. Don't shoot her. So, yeah, I was a little confused with the radio station. I guess they were on two different floors or something or two different parts. I mean, because the radio station did not seem that big, but clearly they were in two different places. I mean, what, at first you, I was like, are there two different radio stations? You mean but Tim? And, they all came out the same door. You mean Tim and Bernard and Dick and... Yeah. Um, I, Bernard said something real quick. I think it's like a, it was like a dimensional thing where it's like you're they were kind of in the same space, but like it was separated by oh, like. Okay, so like once Dick killed the weird Vincent blood blood guy, it's like that. Yeah, pocket I think it disappeared. And yeah, then they were all in the same dimension again. Yeah, I think it was it was like because of the spell. Yeah, because okay. So yeah, they were pretty much in the same studio or studio or whatever. But yeah, they just it was separated by that spell. But yeah, that was super gross. Oh, yeah, yeah with all that blood running and stuff. Turn it off. <laughs> hey, and the it. guy was like, 
I mean, it was kind of like Dick killed him, but also he was kind of already dead. I mean, he was not looking good. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were probably draining the blood out of him, too, but it's just. Oh, yeah, which that does actually remind me one other thing that, again, I'm not entirely sure about because I don't totally, I'm not a doctor. I don't totally understand the uh, stuff about being deaf, but I did think it was a little weird because they said that they, like, Injected, you know, they yeah. had that thing behind their ears, and the um, the dad said something about how the music goes like transmits in through there through your like goes into your brain or something. Mm-hmm. And so I was slightly confused. Again, I felt like they didn't have the they were trying to have the science multiple ways because it was like, oh, it doesn't matter for us because we're deaf. But he's like, but you guys can't just put earplugs in because it's going from that little thing directly into your brain. Yeah. So I'm like, but if you have that because they don't know you're deaf, wouldn't it affect you too if it's going directly into your brain? It's like, do you have to hear? Like, I guess I'm I'm not quite sure. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, they, that affects you. yeah, they didn't explain that well. Unless it's like a two-part thing. It's like, unless it's like you have to have that thing in your hearing maybe. I don't know. Right, yeah. It felt like they were kind of trying to have, trying to have it both ways there. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not sure particularly um i feel like particularly for the dad although the girl as well because they um because he said he was self-induced you know he did something to stop his hearing so it seems like basically he just like punctured his eardrum i think yeah uh, or something so (laughs) yeah i don't know yeah, again, they really didn't go into detail on a lot of that. So. I feel like maybe if the daughter had been born deaf, you could make an argument that there's, like, something. But, I mean, I feel like if you're deaf, it doesn't mean, like, the stuff in your brain. The stuff in your brain is still there. So if it's going right into your brain, I feel like it wouldn't matter if you were deaf. So I felt like that was a little bit unclear there. And, again, it's been 10 years and no one can tell the, the in that town can tell those two are deaf. Right, yeah. And I mean, I get that the people forget their former lives, but it's like they all would have known she was deaf beforehand. Yeah, I, I, I mean, again, there's no point in that. Because she's, it says it's been 10 years that that Paul's folly's been missing, mm-hmm. and she is clearly, like, she clearly went deaf before it happened. Yeah, may, yeah, because, uh, yeah, he said she lost her hearing. Well, he said he lost her hearing when she was 10, so if they've been in there 10 years, yeah. So yeah, maybe she was she, at least twenty. Yeah, I was gonna say she looked like she's at least twenty. So yeah, yeah. And plus, I thought he said it happened when she was at like ice skating or something. Oh, I thought you said you thought he said something about swimming, something or other. Yeah, it was like yeah. some kind of accident or whatever, which also leads you to believe it happened before they got closed off from the world because otherwise yeah. like, that would happen. I mean, just randomly sent his son. Well, I guess I. I, I you can say just sent the son off the camp and not the daughter, but I guess. But I mean, I feel like it, you know, it could have been like Boy Scout camp. Maybe, or, yeah. Know, some kind of sport camp that was for the kid, you know. Maybe, or like yeah. the boy was older. And so it's like, you're old enough to go to sleepaway camp, but his sister's too young. Something like that. Ted and Carol. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I love the blue and pink tape recorders. Yeah. Well, I felt like it was teal green, but. Uh, okay, well. <laughs> Whatever. I thought we were going yeah. for Nightwing Blue. <laughs> um, I feel like it was too green to be Nightwing Blue. And I love it wasn't her memory that, that, that brought her out of it. It was his memory. <laughs> yeah, and not even... I mean, I guess it was kind of traumatic because he was like, I screwed up with this person that I love. But, yeah. Well, but I, that part I did think was very good uh... that she said, she was like, yeah, the memory thing helped, but not the traumatic memories. And I did think that that was good because that does make sense that like Bruce would hardcore be um like oh yeah it's the trauma that brings you back and makes you remember who you are and Corey is a much more positive person so it definitely makes sense that Corey would be like oh yeah it was actually the happy memory and I feel like Dick would be somewhere in the middle that you know in the future to be like record memories both happy and sad because you never know which one will be the one that triggers you to remember who you are and again, I mean, it was it, it, with Bruce. It's always trauma since that night his Definitely. parents were killed. Yeah. Speaking of that, since we were tied to to tie it back up with World's Finest, I was scrolling through Facebook, and it's, I don't know some random. There are so many different random comic memes. Had um, posted again that thing from um, 
at the end of that World Finals 12, where at the end of the bad day, where Bruce is like, some things don't work out, you know, you take the loss and you move on. And people were like, oh, yes, Bruce Wayne, you take the loss and you move on. Yeah, he's so good at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bunch of people were up. Little in the comments, they were like, "Yeah, Bruce, how's that moving on going?" <laughs> and that was kind of fun. Oh yeah. Oh. And people were also like, "Yeah, Talia does have a sister, but you don't want to date her because <laughs> I guess she like murders people or whatever." And they're and they're all older women because they you know Lazarus pits and stuff. So, uh... like we said, he should have said Selena. That would have made much more sense. Yes. Oh, but speaking of uh, world's finest, yeah, fourteen came out today. Uh... Right, yeah, so let's uh, did, let's did, transition. Did, Give did, us the lowdown film. Well, did you read the last issue, issue 13? I did, yes. Okay. So, yeah, yeah so, so I know that, spoiler alert, Bruce Wayne's been arrested for murder. Again, this is how many times has Bruce Wayne been arrested for murder now? Let's see. Hold on. So back in the 40s, remember we read that one where he was arrested uh, for murder and Dick, like, does something so he can sneak out. Because, you know, it's the 40s, so you could like, easily sneak out of the prison cell. But, yes. Uh, like. You know, tapping on the glass in it, you know, because yes. it must have been built during the Depression to substandard. Uh, it, and there was that one issue. So there was the 40s. Then there was that one we read just a few weeks ago that was also a one issue. Sh and then, of Shadow course, of the Bat and 55. Then of course, we had that very long Bruce Wayne murderer fugitive arc. So this is at least the fourth time. Yes. Yes. At least. <laughs> well, rich people get up to shady stuff, so. <laughs> Yes. Shenanigans. So yeah, so basically I mean uh, like Bruce is calling uh, Clark and he's like he's like, How could you put that in the paper? And Clark's like, Well, how am I supposed to explain to the people at the Daily Planet and the general public how Clark Kent would know that Bruce Wayne is completely innocent, you know? But then but then and is Bruce Wayne like, Oh yeah, good point. Well Bruce well well Bruce Bruce does think it's good because he's like, Well well yeah, well at least now the mur the actual murder is gonna be get a little more comfortable and probably mess up. Plus Clark's not the one that wrote it, remember? Jimmy wrote it. Yes. And Clark was like, I don't think you should publish this, but Perry was like, Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, Bruce is like, yes, you've 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 uh, congratulations in the middle of a murder investigation, your blunder has hobbled Batman, and you know. But uh, yeah, they're talking about Metamorpho and everything that's going on, and uh, Bruce goes, uh, don't you wish you had a detective as a partner right now? And Superman goes, oh, I found one. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, it seems like because uh, after Bruce calls Oliver Queen, it seems like a bunch of billionaires are getting like replaced or something so they're tracking this down like they're like i know dick and superman are uh like interrogating some of uh metamorphos villains and stuff like dick's hanging a guy. wait so oliver queen is getting replaced like a robot's coming or something yeah kind of yeah a lot of bill a lot of the billionaires are because uh yeah they track track it down to professor ivo uh an old justice League. wait this is from we've read this one before there's i mean this is from the 40s as well there's that one where um bruce goes on a vacation and he gets and he's like gets trapped on the island it's a, it's a mere millionaire's island then and he comes home because yeah it's the one i've had us read it before yeah. um because dick greets him when he comes home by like popping a balloon in his face and bruce like and then he uh like Bruce gets mad at him for something, and he's like, "You little brat!" Rah, 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 and like kicks him out of the study or whatever. And Dick almost reveals the secret of Batman and Robin, but then he realizes that this is fake Bruce before he does. I mean, unless this is Mark Wade's uh, like re modern retelling of this kind of, because he is a big guy. Uh, I comic. think it might be. He knows that he knows a lot of comic history, so I, I would not be surprised if Mark Wade's read that story. So. Mm. Oh yeah, because yeah, when uh, the yeah, Clark sets Simon Stagg's funeral, it's like he's like that's not a human body in the coffin, you know. It, it, he's been replaced by some kind of robot or something. So Bruce Wayne could not have killed someone. But then Superman and Dick track down uh, Professor Ivo's lab, and there's like a bunch of half uh, built uh, <clears throat> robots or androids or whatever. And Superman's like, uh, he's like they're not a threat to me. And Ivo's like, oh, I know, they're for the boy. But I think, but I think Dick's uh, Dick's actually gonna have to save Superman because spoilers, kids. At the end, it, <clears throat> yes, Professor Ivo has brought back Amazo, who some of you may know is the uh, android he created uh, 
that can mimic the powers of the Justice League. But it seems like this time he's like, I guess he ha- has it copying Metamorpho's powers. He's like, yeah, so this time he can he can uh, mimic all kinds of elements, including kryptonite. Uh-oh. So that's... Well, yeah, wait, where's Metamorpho in this? Does he go to the island with them? Well, he, he, was, he was kind of... Um, well, they kind of split up like Metamorpho went with Batman and then Dick and Superman have been... Uh, Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. So, yeah, well, Batman and uh, Metamorpho went to track down the Metal Men because they think they're going to leave there. But, yeah, that's the big cliffhanger is Amazo is, yes, uh, copying all these elements, including Kryptonite. So, as I said, is Dick going to take da- Dick's gonna have to take down this android? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, show it again. Oh, wait. Uh, what, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you. So, yeah, is Dick going to save Superman? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it might be, um, yeah. He might. It's probably mixing things because I just googled Professor Ivo and it said his first appearance was the Brave and the Bold, number thirty. Yeah, because yeah, because it's not till nineteen sixty. Yeah, um, cause, yeah, because the Justice League's first appearance was like Brave and the Bold twenty eight. So yeah, he was. He's mostly been a Justice League villain. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Mark Wade's not going. If he's copying that story, it's not word for word. Yeah, he's adding different elements, but. Yeah, just that's cool. No, nah, yeah, mix it up. But now I like Mark Wade's been giving Dick a lot to do and making it, you know. Well, yeah, and I mean, now pretty soon, starting over the summer, we're going to have Dick as both Robin and Teen Titans and Nightwing and Titans. This is truly an amazing time to be alive. Exactly. Exactly. Because I love Dick as both Nightwing and Robin. Now I can have new of each at the same time. So amazing. Oh, yes, the fans are uh, rejoicing. It's a good time to be a Dick Grayson fan. I'm here for Dick. It is. All right. So she's... I kind of feel bad, though, that we are prospering so much at the expense of the other Robins. Like, they have nothing. <laughs> I know. At least Jason had a book for a while, man. Yeah, they're, they're... yeah, but it's done, right? Yeah. And again, I mean, it's, I don't know if, did we announce it? Yeah. The, the yeah, Tim's book is coming to an end, but it's like, yeah, the last issue that came out actually had decent art. I'm like, oh, now after they announced it's getting canceled, they're putting decent art, a decent artist on it. I this? know. I feel like if they had had that art from the beginning, the book wouldn't be getting canceled because it, I assume it would have only it's helped. Getting canceled because it's not selling great. I mean, I'm I a guess. big, I'm a big Tim fan, and yeah, I almost that art almost made me drop the book. So yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I can figure because I feel like the writing's been fine. The yeah, writing's no. been good. Um. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you want a you want a successful book in comics that that's the ba- juggling act. You're gonna have good art and good, you know, good story. Um, but yeah, I mean, but they're canceling Batgirls too, so I don't, yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what they're doing. It's hard to, although it's hard to know how. Like I don't know what their cutoff is and stuff. I mean, it's like obviously they would just announce to the general public, "Well, this has, book has to sell this many, or we're canceling it." But it still feels a little weird. I mean, Tim's only getting ten issues. I mean, that's not even a whole year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know that if they're feels, if they're like, that feels like not enough issues to really know. Yeah, I just said, uh, well, again, but uh, I mean, I, well. I, Dick's doing the numbers, so it's like I guess if people aren't doing the numbers, but they, I guess they, coming soon they're they're doing a new Brave and the Bold, you know, the Batman team up book. So yeah, I mean I'm sure it'll be. You have to let me know if anybody I might care about is in that one because I didn't set up to order that one. I'm like, oh, I'm getting tired of ordering. Yeah, eight thousand different Batman Batman books. Of course, then they come out with more books with Dick Grayson. Or something. I know. Uh, I'm. I'm I mean, I'm sure he'll do. They'll do the whole DC universe, but I wonder if they're going to do a bunch of Bat Family in there too. Maybe. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Well, and we don't know what's happening with the Robin book. I mean, because it was Robin, and then it transitioned into Batman versus Robin. Like, are they yeah. going to back up again? I don't know. But yeah, I mean, as of right now, what they've announced starting in the summer. Basically, it sounds like by August, the books in the Bat Family will be. Batman, Detective, Batman Brave and the Bold, Nightwing, Titans, which I guess is like kind of but kind of its own thing, and then Batman Superman World's Finest, and then again because it has Dick in it, but it's also like a team book, Titan World's Finest Teen Titans. So that's seven books, but basically but basically those books are either a Bruce or Dick book. Mm-hmm. I mean, has anybody else's book been announced? 
Not that I know of. Yeah, no. I'm saying because they're, I mean, all the other ones they're canceling. They haven't said anything about Robin. Mm-mm. And then, I mean, maybe they'll continue to have Tim in. Which one is it? It's Batman. He's in right right now. Yeah, he's yeah, in yeah. Batman backup. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I guess it remains to be seen. Once that story is resolved, are they going to keep it where he's backup? I don't know. Yeah, but oh, let's get the Nightwing one hundred and three. It seems, it seems weird that. Or like, why don't they restart uh like a urban legends as well? Whatever, they'll do them. Yeah. But yeah, I just feel like, as we said when we were talking about it before, I just feels like they didn't try as hard as they could have with with Tim's book. And of course, it's annoying. It's extra annoying because they were open in that book about Tim being bisexual and then they're only letting it run for 10 issues and they're canceling it and i feel like that'll just give a lot of people an opportunity because i've seen some people you know i know you shouldn't read facebook comments sometimes i do and i always regret it of course and people are like oh i'd buy the book if they made Tim straight again and stupid st- and stupid stuff like that yeah. and i just feel like dc didn't like they anyone could have anticipated that would happen and so it almost feels like they didn't try as hard as they could have so that they could be like, oh, well, we tried to do diversity and it didn't work or whatever. I mean, I know that they're, it's not as though they're, I mean, things are going really well for, I, I think, is he bisexual, John Kent? I think so. Yeah, I think, so. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that that's the other thing. People thought it was kind of, uh, it's like, oh, is this just like a gimmick DC's coming up with? Because it's like right after John Ken comes out, Tim came out like, I swear, within like a month or so. It's just like, really? But yeah, I mean, I have no problem with any of it. But yes, kids, if you want uh, characters of different orientations or different, you know, different nationalities, whatever, you have to vote with your money. Whatever character you love, again, it's a business. They will, they'll give you whatever book you want, but you have to vote with your money. But yeah, it felt like DC, with the art that they put on the Tim book, it felt like they kneecapped the book from the start. That they were like, oh, well, we'll try, but it's like, you know when it's something like that. Like, you know that you need to give it and like good. And like some of the covers, some of the covers, especially some of the variants, I'm like, there are some really good covers on this. I'm like, I wish the interior would match the covers. Yeah, they have plenty of they have plenty of great artists to choose from, and I'm not saying that that artist is bad. I mean, that could work for other kinds of art, but it did not work well for a superhero book. It did not yeah. work well for well, Tim. Well, I think maybe ah, uh, I think it was Lilith might have made the point where like manga is kind of big with the kids right now. Maybe they were trying to go for that market. Because they had the kind, that little kind of a manga look to it, so a little. But I feel like if it was supposed to be manga, they didn't do it right. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't. Because like, whenever I read it, I was like, "Oh, these guys look like Bert from Sesame Street." Yeah, the whole the, like the body proportions were way off. Yeah, like I like Bert and Ernie; they were my jam when I was a little kid. But you know, I never really thought of Tim Drake as looking like Bert. So. And people were supposed to look realistic; they're not supposed to look like puppets. Yeah, in this it was a bit thing. jarring. Yeah. All right, let's do let's do Nightwing. <laughs> All right, yes. Made it to the underworld. Hell heist. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, part three of four. So, yeah, next next uh, month will be the conclusion. Yeah, they got to wrap it up because then in June, that's when Titans bust out in Titans. And yeah, in their own book. It yeah. does his own thing. But, yeah, a lot of, lot of names in here I haven't heard in a while, like uh, Blaze confronts Neuron, uh... Yeah, I remember her from 90s Superman books. Blaze and Satanus were like a brother-sister demon combo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. I just was yeah. like, oh. Yeah, no. They, yeah, no. She's been around before. So, yeah. But oh, okay. again, just like another demon uh, oh, de- cool. devil thing. So, yeah. That tongue was freaky. Oh, that yeah. So long and purple. <laughs> I mean, unless it's just the artist's choice. I'm like, they, they usually show like her face. I don't know why it's in shadow like that, but. Oh, yeah. I mean, I thought that was kind of cool and creepy. Oh, yeah, it is creepy. So, yeah, uh, Neuron and Blaze are basically fight. you know. Of course, there's all, it doesn't matter what what company, what calling company it is, there's always a war in hell. 
Right. Well, that's what. Uh, I mean, it's full of bad people, so uh, yeah, why not? Right. Yeah. Then that's what uh, Raven said. She's like, "Oh, he's gonna be losing face. We gotta go now. It's a good time. They'll be." Uh... Mm-hmm. Which yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. And then Donna, Barbara, and Corey take uh, Olivia to Themyscira. Yeah. Okay. And this page I really liked because when Corey's like, "That girl is one of the greatest hand-to-hand fighters on the planet," and then Barbara saying, "Starfire is the greatest warrior of another planet." Uh, I really like that because, yeah, I always felt like in that one, which we've talked about this before, that one Titans episode from right around, or, or not episode, one Titans issue from right around 2000, where um, Corey asked for help from Oracle and Oracle was kind of cold to yeah. her and Cyborg was like, what's up with that? And Corey was like, I don't know. That always annoyed me because I felt like, no, that is a cheap shot. Barbara would not, Barbara is a, Barbara is way better than that. She would not be jealous. And, and like, that was something that I kind of didn't like in, I mean, as we know, there are many things I don't like in Nightwing year one. It's too angsty. But again, when Barbara was like, oh, the Spice Girl or whatever, I just feel like, no, they, Barbara would not be, Barbara would not be that petty. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So I really like that. And then, of course, you know, Donna is Donna. Is Donna exactly. <laughs> But yeah, teaching they're gonna teach Olivia how to fight. Yes. Oh, and of course Haley's there. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. So yeah, the rest of the time. which um well then that's something that I was confused about later because I was like oh yeah Haley can be there because she's a girl dog but then when the bad I thought it was like only women could set foot on Thin Scarab. Well, isn't there some of the comics where they say that? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's actually like a spell, but it, it might just be like a rule where so it's like yeah, they the villains are really breaking the rule here. Because yeah, I remember one time when they all went there in the Teen Titans, and the guys went, but they were like never touched the ground. They were always on. So I don't know. I want to say like a magic carpet kind of thing, but I don't think it, that's what it was. <laughs> it was something like that. But yeah, the rest of the Titans, yeah, they find Blaze and uh, they ask her, where does where's Neuron keep his contracts for souls? Creepy Tower. Yes. So, they come up where Beast Boy is going to look like a demon and sneak them in. Yep. Love the- uh, then, this I thought was really funny um, and was really appropriate because they're in hell. But, I mean, look at those computers. So old! <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then, uh, Cyborg... I've never seen so many icons on one desktop. <laughs> this is hell. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, and I was like, oh, all these useless programs, bloatware, malware, phishing scams. I know if I randomly ask you your date of birth or your first pet's name, do not give me that information. <laughs> but yeah, he finds the contract for uh, Olivia. And of course, yes, we find out the mother is... Another name, Flash from the past, Jezebel Jet. Yeah, dang. From Batman, Batman R.I.P. <laughs> or no, yeah. even before. But yeah, the Grant Morrison run on Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and she had been around before, right? But it was with Grant Morrison that she became the. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, if she was around part before, of a but murderous criminal organization that tried to kill him. I feel like she was around in the seventies. I don't know, maybe, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, she was part of Black. Was that Black Glove or whatever? Yeah. Dr. Hurt, Google all that. Her real quick. Because uh, uh, I was going to say. Uh, oh, no. You're right. Her first appearance was in 2006. Well, maybe I'm thinking of somebody else then. Yes, Batman 650. Silver St. Cloud, maybe, are you thinking of? Oh, yeah. You know what? I yeah. bet that is who I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably thinking of Silver. Yep. Yes. Uh, yes. First appearance, Batman 656 on October 2006. Uh, appearance of death, Batman six eighty one from December two thousand eight. So, yeah, you're right. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Silver. I'm getting my alliterative names confused. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, she was also uh, she was a former model who ran the small African country of Matamba. And then Beast Boy with the hard hitting observations. Batman really has a type, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, when Dick's like, yeah, she. Uh... Yeah, she and Batman were a thing. They were good together for a time. She was part of a murder. Yeah. Uh, Trying to kill him. It's like, yeah, that does sound familiar. Who else has he been with? Tell you. <laughs> He's part of murder. And I mean, uh, Catwoman is not part of a murderous criminal organization that tried to kill him, but she is a criminal. <laughs> yes. Batman. My favorite character. Sorry, I couldn't let that go by. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, 
I love uh, Cyborg. Where's Jezebel Jet? Dick. She's gone. Talia Al Ghul removed her head. <laughs> <laughs> but then I didn't. I also enjoyed his, like, all right, we can get around it. What do we need? Bureaucracy! Dun, dun, yes! Uh. <laughs> Classic. And then we see Wally's keeping an eye on, uh, I guess the Grinning Man is in Iron Heights, but of course, Noron. But somehow Neuron's able to sneak in. Well, he's magic, so. Yeah, I guess so. Mm. Well, he opened up a little demon portal. Yep, which is kind of, uh, it's going to play a role here. So, yeah, we see the ladies uh, still training Olivia on uh, Themyscira when Wonder Woman appears to show up. I thought she, Olivia, I just say they mentioned in here that she was nine. I thought she was younger than nine. I thought she was more like six or something. Yeah, it seemed, it seemed like it for a while, but yeah, I can't, yeah. But yes, but Wonder Woman appears to show up, but it's not Wonder Woman. Of course, it's the Grinning Man again. Backed up by Gorilla Grodd and Dr. Polaris. Yeah, so Dr. Polaris is the one that's messing with the metal, right? Yeah, he's basically DC's Magneto, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's a Green Lantern. And then the psychic attack, is that? Grodd. Oh, that's him? Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's just what you don't want, a.k.a. a huge African gorilla with psychic uh, abilities. Pretty intense. Mm. So, uh, yeah, the rest of the Titans go to help on Themyscira. Dick stays behind and has a talk with Neuron. Basically says, uh, yeah, this contract's no good. It's not worth the blood it's written in. That's right. He says, because I'm Olivia's legal guardian and I didn't sign it. It's a temporary foster form issued by social services. That's your local government! <laughs> Bureaucracy sweeping in to save the day. And Neuron's ready to deal, and I love Dick. A deal with the devil? That's never ended badly. <laughs> yeah, right. Never! Never! Uh, but, uh, yeah, Neuron's like, uh, you must feel so inadequate around your other heroes. You know, you have no powers. It's like, what have I connected you to the Speed Force? What could you do with the strength of a Kryptonian? So, yeah, I had this spoiler for me on uh, social media before today. Yes, it looks like he gives Dick's uh, powers in a new costume. It's a fascinating suit. It's kind of like a mix of Disco Wing and the second and the second suit. Yeah, because it's yellow, blue, got some black, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it says, next, the Temptation of Super Wing. But you know he won't. Oh, yeah, of course not. And then, of course, we get that part, uh, the backup story. Yeah, this one was so interesting. Mm hmm. Because it was revealed, okay, it's not the mom that cut it. The trapeze wire, yeah, it's the kid. Yep, it was the kid. Because he didn't want to do the trapeze. No. But he tried to cut his own line, not his mother's. And there was supposed to be a net. He just wanted to get hurt. Or he just wanted it to look dangerous so his mom would freak out. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And so, yeah, I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, I mean, on the one hand, it was a little bit sad because it's like, I mean, obviously they did it. It was, you know, oh, here's a kid who doesn't, who's, you know, doing the trapeze with his mom. And like, that's what Dick wanted. And this kid can have it, but he doesn't want it. And Dick, you know, couldn't have it. And maybe he would have wanted it. So, you know, you've got that. But on the other hand, I did think it was a good point of the kid saying, like, I don't want to. Like, I don't want to always be training. You know, I don't. Yeah, I want a normal so it was life. a good point about parents who um, are pushing their kids too hard to, you know, be the best at whatever sport. Be, you know, in beauty contests. Be, you know, whatever. At, Sports, yeah. Yeah, be whatever at music or whatever. You know, if your kid doesn't want that, you shouldn't make them make them do it. You know? Yeah, you're, no. you're, It's your kid's life. Not you living through your kid. They're never going to excel if they're doing if you're forcing them to do something they don't want to do. And then, oh, yeah, I was saying I just want to do things other than training all the time. Yeah, and then Dick and John had kind of have that conversation about their childhoods. Yep. I mean, like, yeah, you love the circus, but that's not where you grew up. And he's like, yeah, I guess not. Exactly. Robin. Yep. And John Kent kind of uh, got yes robbed of much of his childhood. Thank you, Brian Michael Bendis. Yeah, it's in the end. He got robbed of much of his childhood because he just like grew up. Boom, right? He was. It was a weird time thing where he got taken away. He was held prisoner by Ultraman, the evil evil version of Superman. It was basically just just weird quantum physics things where it's like, yeah, he spent oh he aged while he was away, but he got kind of got brought back not too long after he left. So yeah, so yeah, that's weird. So he. I mean, whatever. It's it's um yeah. It's comics, so that's fine. But also, they are not totally. I mean, it's it, 
humans so i mean very few things for humans are innate we have to learn everything and so it's i feel like if comics were really it would be interesting for somebody someday to really dive into that trope because i feel like even if you're a smart person if you if your growth gets kind of oddly accelerated and then you come back not that long after you left but you look older i mean that's gonna leave you with a huge gap i mean people you know you well, when you're 10 and you come back and yeah. everybody thinks you're 18 that's eight years of stuff that you haven't learned what? that's a yeah. big gap oh yeah especially i mean he lived through all that but it's like he was kind of held prisoner in like a, a volcano that whole time so yeah he wasn't really interacting with people except for his jailer yeah and it yeah, that's always the big point with this, where it's just like, yeah, he he lost it from like ten to seventeen or eighteen with his parents. You know, they. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's Brian Michael Bendis. So but yeah, be also like a lot of gaps in your knowledge. I mean, oh yeah, how did he learn to drive? I mean, you have to. I mean, obviously, you can learn to drive anytime, um, but you know. I mean, he was away when, like, what's up with going through puberty? Like, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah. You know, just like no, I mean, you know, you learn a lot of math and science and stuff during those years. So it was like, does he come back and he's all like, uh, I don't understand how chemistry works because now it looks like I've graduated from high school, even though I only ed- was educated through the fifth grade. Well, he can always pull that uh, uh, trick every spit. Anyone with super speed has. You could just read a book, like a, a book, like multi, like hundreds of times. I suppose with, so. With I guess that's good that he's Kryptonian because if that happened to a regular person, we'd be kind of screwed for a long time. Oh we'd yeah, that many years. <laughs> oh yeah. But yeah, so they so, anyway. so so they solve the trapeze mystery, but they're like the kid couldn't have planted the bomb because there was a bomb. So, so now we have still have a mystery. Exactly, which I assume will be solved in the next book because then that's the end of this <laughs> of that arc. Yeah, I would assume. Yes, thank you. The end of the arc. Although I don't know, maybe he's gonna keep. I mean, yeah, the backup story could keep going even if it's like a new arc in the main story. Yeah. Yeah, or they could get a new, um, I mean, it would be good to get a new backup. Like, how long yeah. does this, like, he could still be with John, but, like, okay, they move on to something else. <laughs> or, back to our point, I mean, you could start a new backup where it's, like, Tim, or Dick and Tim, or Dick and Jason, or, yeah. Oh, uh, I would like to see one that was Dick, Damien, and John. That would be good. Oh, oh, yeah. Because we have not really, well, I mean, Dick has interacted with, Damien some in other books, but we've never seen Damien in the... I mean, we haven't seen Damien in the Nightwing book in a long time. Yeah, no, no. I mean, Tom Taylor hasn't written him. I, I don't think we've seen him since... I mean, I know we, we hang out with Dick some when Dick was... Um, when it was being written by Seeley. Yeah. But I don't think since he's went through the weird Rick Grayson thing that... Yeah, yeah no, Tim, not, um, not, not, not really. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, because, I mean, Tim was in some of the early ones, and there was that one... Uh, it was that one annual where he was with Jason. Yeah. All right. So, anything else? Oh, great, great A, a again. That was good. It was fun. Yeah, I mean, had some good had some good jokes. I thought it was very appropriate. All the computers in Hell are from the nineties. Yes, Hell was nineties technology. Yes, mm-hmm. that was good. That was on point. All right, so. So what's up for next week, Phil? Oh, you want guest stars? I got guest stars for you because uh, yes, we're good. Next week we're gonna do the crossover Brotherhood of the Fist from Oh Yes, Green Arrow one thirty four and one thirty five, Detective Comics seven twenty three, Robin fifty. What is that fifty five and Nightwing twenty three? Ooh, that's a lot. All right, so hopefully one, two, three, four, five issues. Yeah. Yeah, no, I guess I don't mean this a lot. It's just like a lot to, that's a lot of different, uh. I mean, so it's basically a team up between the Connor Hawk, Green Arrow, Batman, Tim Drake, and, uh, yes, Nightwing, so. Yeah, so can you say those again? I'm gonna write them down just so I have an easier time finding them in the app. All right, Green Arrow, 134 and 135. Okay. Detective Comics, 723. Okay. Robin, 55. Okay. And Nightwing, 23. All right, awesome. Thanks. So. What did all those books have in common? They were all being written by Chuck Dixon at the at that time. 
Ah. Wait, all of them, like, all the time, or just for this crossover? No, all the time, for a long time. How does this guy write so many books? I don't oh know. My God. Yeah, he, he was he was writing yet. How did he have time to sleep? I don't know, and I think, I mean, it's not in the crossover, but I think he, he was that the point he was writing Birds of Prey, too? I mean, yeah, I mean, he was... Yeah, I mean, he would, yeah. Wasn't it, was he also writing the main Batman, or was that somebody else? No, that was somebody else. I think that was, oh, okay. been Doug mentioned that point. But yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> that's not enough. Detective Comics, Tim's book, well, Dick's book. I was book. say, I was like, yeah, I knew he was writing a bunch of the Batman ones. I didn't realize he was writing Green Arrow, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yes. So, Connor Hawk. Yeah, wow. Hardcore. All right, so yes, kids. Well, uh, he was not then, but... I need to remember oh, that because yeah. he came out in the Pride uh, issue as asexual. He's asexual. Yes, which unfortunately, yes, I, I believe that uh, Chuck Dixon, who created the character, was not too happy with that. So I don't know. He's kind of. I mean, sadly, that does not surprise me because Chuck Dixon, I know, is very conservative. Yeah. Um, but I like. I was stoked because. I'm asexual, although I'm asexual, aromantic, and Connor was like, I want to be with someone, and I was like, <laughs> um, because he's obviously not aromantic, but I'm like, for real, Chuck Dixon, I mean, I feel like conservatives should not feel offended by asexuality. Like, what, you're mad that we don't want to have sex? Get out of here with that. <laughs> I Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not on his side, but I think his argument was just, he was like, that's not how I wrote the character. Like, uh, that's fine. Um, but, yeah, but, I'm not writing him anymore. Well, I was going to say, yeah, anything, you know, DC or Marvel, it's like you create a character there. You don't own them. I mean, that's the company's right. character. I feel like um, the main difference between fan fiction about DC and Marvel characters and the actual comics is just, did DC or Marvel pay you or not? Because if they paid you, then it's, but it's like the people who wrote, I mean, yeah. We don't, Bob Kane can sit around and be like, that's not how I wrote Batman. And we're all like, yeah, good, because the way you wrote Batman sucked. <laughs> he was going to put him in a red costume. <laughs> exactly. Have you seen that go- one going yep. around the internet? Um, yep. That's like, Batman, with only by Bob Kane, with no contributions of Bill Finger. And it's like, Batman in the red costume. And he like punches a crook and he's like, gee, I wish I knew where to take him. Because <laughs> Bill Finger also invented the commissioner. Oh, yes. No. And all the good villains, and Robin and Joker. Although I think Jerry Robinson helped a little bit with that. I think so, yeah. And the point stands that yes. <laughs> all right, so. But yeah, I'm sure Chuck. I'm sure Chuck Dixon was super mad that Tim came out as bisexual. And all that kind of yeah, cause, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, there's a. <laughs> I like a lot of his stuff, and I'm like, I, you know, at first I was like, I wanted to interview Chuck Dixon, but then I saw his. his uh, very extreme views and i was just like oh i guess i can't talk to him now yeah i mean i did interview him for uh oh yeah the, the book but then after and i knew he was kind of conservative and then afterwards i was like oh dang this guy is like really different which is fine i mean just because we have different political views doesn't mean i can't yeah. interview him but i feel like he's become increasingly extreme now that he is i don't know like semi-retired or whatever he doesn't really write for I don't think he really writes for DC anymore, does he? No, 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 no. Yeah, I think I think that's it. I think that's his uh, one of his views now. It's just like, oh yeah, DC won't have me because they're too woke now or something. And it's just like, yes, because when I think woke, I think DC comics. <laughs> well, you know, all these characters yeah. are bisexual or asexual now. Right? Yeah, because you know, nothing says woke like giant corporations. <laughs> how 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 dare how dare these fictional characters that like mirror the real world? How dare they? Right? How dare they change and evolve over time like real people do? <laughs> but yes, you could you could also, but you can't read that interview in Dick Grace and Boy Wonder right uh, now on Amazon. <laughs> in which we do not say anything politically. Uh... <laughs> No, it's all about. Uh, there's nothing politically offensive in that interview. <laughs> it's all about the character. It's straight up about the character, Dick Grayson. All right, so yeah, so next week, uh, I guess we'll cover Brotherhood of the Fist and Dude, Where's My Gar? Yes. Wait, wait, does Brotherhood of the Fist involve monkeys? Um, it's like oh, the the there's like different like ninja clans, kind of, and like it's like yeah, I think one's like the monkey clan or. Uh, okay, I was like. Something with like fighting monkeys in DC that's a brotherhood. 
But there are multiple brotherhoods. Yeah, there's like different brotherhoods and stuff. Okay. I think that's the thing. Yeah, it's been a while since I read that. But yeah, I mean, we'll get to that next week. But yeah, I believe it's multiple clans. So. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, send us your thoughts on that. And, uh, oh, man, wait. Oh no, oh, I was gonna say we're not gonna we're gonna be recording, but no 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 no. Uh we'll get the new episode of Titans before then, so Yeah, it comes out tomorrow. <gasps> oh that's right. Oh my god, there's so much good stuff on tomorrow. The finale of Picard, Titans, oh man. <clears throat> Me glued to my TV. Good day, Phil. Hey, I might wait to maybe I'll wait till the weekend to watch Titans, because that's what I did with these two. I waited till like yesterday to watch them. Yeah, I think I watched them on Sunday, maybe. I, I wanted to be a little fresh and fresher in my mind, so yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yes, kids, next week, Brotherhood of the Fist and Dude, Where's My Gar? Uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find everything Capes and Lunatics on the website, uh, episodes, social media, merchandise, the Patreon. Find it all at tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. And as we mentioned before, but it bears repeating, if you love the character of Dick Grayson in any of his various incarnations, go pick up Dick Grayson, Boy Wonder, now on Amazon. You think you know everything about him? No, you don't. So... If you want the Holy Bible of Dick Grayson, go pick up Dick Grayson. Go on. <laughs> the Holy Bible. <laughs> that's that's my religion. <laughs> All right. So, thank you for joining us, kids. We covered a lot tonight. Different. Uh, we covered the uh, the show, the comics, uh, so, some 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 uh, creators and controversies, and uh, yeah, we were all over the place. So you're welcome. Who say who says you didn't get your money's worth from this free podcast? Fine, we're a fine value. Yes. But yes, lots of ninjas and fighting next week with Batman, Robin, Nightwing, Green Arrow. And the new Titans episode, which again should have guest stars because according to the internet, yes, that's the Star Girl crossover episode, so yeah, I mean, I feel like it's possible that Dick and crew might not even be in it. I don't know. I guess Unless they out. show up at, like, the end or something. All right, kids. We, again, covered a lot tonight. But, again, join us next week for more. Join us same wing time. Same wing channel. The Nightwing News. And remember, deals with the devil never go wrong.